Well, 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 thank you for joining me. Forgive us for being a few minutes late here. We had a staff member caught up in a traffic situation, but we are here and you are there. And I pray that you'll have all of your family. Oh, how we need the family altar again in our homes. You know, if there's anything this time of separation from one another has done for us is put families back together. Husbands are realizing that their wife is a really nice person. She can even cook. We found out that you can actually cook at home. You don't have to eat every meal outside your home. Parents are finding out there are teenagers living in their homes. and It's just wonderful. Now, I grew up with a family altar where we prayed. We prayed together. We studied God's Word together. We got ready for our Sunday school lessons together. And so what I've learned of the Word of God didn't come to me when I started going to Bible college. No, sir. At that point, I ne had nearly 20 years of Bible training for my whole life in my home, in my church. Even in school, then we prayed. We did the pledge of allegiance to the flag, and we, we did those things that are honorable. We need to get back to the central things. Now, I'm going to start off. Usually, we just begin praying, but I'm going to share a couple things with you because I, I've been in prayer most of today. I had my own prayers this morning, of course, and Holy Communion that I receive every, every morning before I do anything else to center myself, that I belong to God and God belongs to me. And uh, then I was on a tremendous phone conference with a couple of my wonderful, wonderful friends, Tony Perkins of the Great Family Research Center, Family Research Council, I believe it is. And uh, he, he's such a tremendous friend, always on the front lines of standing up for faith and family. And then also a former Valor Christian College board member, Miss Alveda King, was on the phone as well. And the three of us prayed together with hundreds and hundreds of pastors across the state of Ohio and we had a great, great time. Now, I just heard the door open, and that means Fury came in. So he's, come here, come here. We're live. There he is. Say hello to the folks. He's going to be my prayer partner right now. Go there and lay down. Go there and lay down. That's a good, good boy. Well, uh, so we're going to pray now in a moment. But before we do, I want to, well, there's Miss Joni. Look at that. Come here. That, look, they can see you. Wave at him. Wait, uh, which side of me are you on? Get on this side over here. Come on, I'm going to give you a hug. Praise you God. She didn't know I was doing this up here. I'm actually in my study at home, and she was in there and saw me praying, and she's like, whoa, wait a minute, he's here. And she brought Fury with her too. So it would be great if you'd take him out. Fury, you may not be my prayer partner. Outside, go outside. Good boy. Oh, if my children had only obeyed like that, <laughs> we'd be something, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, I want to read to you just a minute. I, I want to get this in your spirit because, you know, we've been doing our, our Monday night corporate prayer meeting since the beginning of the year, and it's been one of the most tremendous things in the, in the life, in the family of our church. It's made such a difference. And then when we got the order, you know, no more than uh, what I think it started first at 250 people and then went to 50 or 250 and then went to 50 and then went to 10. And right now here in Ohio, they're telling everybody, stay in your home that possibly can uh, over these two weeks. So we're all abiding by the powers that be. And But God spoke this to me today over in the third chapter of the book of Acts. Now, Peter and John, so that means you and me, Peter and John, for whithersoever two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst of us. Again, the prayer of agreement is the greatest prayer we can pray. One chases a thousand, two puts 10,000 to flight, 
three chase a hundred thousand, four chase a million. Imagine what 10 can do. Amen. And we're way, way, way more than 10. Hope you're letting your friends get on. I'm giving them a moment to, so everybody can get on. So they went up, Peter and John, two of them, because two is the lowest number possible for agreement. All right? So you right there where you are and me right here where I am, we can be in agreement whether we're three feet apart or 3,000 miles apart. That's the beauty of living in this age, isn't it? Something that God allowed you to live in such a time as this. Now, I rebuke that fear because I heard somebody say, well, I don't know. I'm living during the uh, COVID-19. Well, you're triumphing over it as well in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. And I'm prompted of the Holy Spirit right now where I am in this, in this segment. I'm prompted. I'm led by the Spirit of God. And I'm telling you right now that we are going to pray. I'm suspending everything right now for us to pray for one of my sons and uh, his beautiful wife, who's my daughter, and their children, who are my grandchildren in the Spirit. And I want to pray right now for, for a man who stands in faith like few others I've ever encountered, raising up an unbelievably powerful church. I've preached there. He's preached for me. His, his anointing is exceptionally prophetic. He's a member of our great City Harvest network of churches who I'm praying for twice a day. And uh, Miles Rutherford and his lovely wife, Delana. <sighs> Miles has been uh, hit with double pneumonia and he is currently in a hospital. And uh, I want us to pray the prayer of agreement for him right now that this thing will not stand. Now, Father, you have decreed, and therefore we declare that you are our healer. You, right now, know no distance in time and space. You fill all in all. And together, right now, we send forth your anointed, creative capability from our words, we open our mouths wide. Come on, pray with me. We open our mouths wide and we allow you to fulfill it. Now you will see the words that we speak, so shall it be. Psalm 81.10, we speak now the creative capability of God Almighty into the bronchial tubes, into the throat, into the lungs and every part of his respiratory system. Miles Rutherford, you hear the word of the Lord. Be healed by the mighty power of God. Let all fluid disappear out of those lungs. Let any congestion leave those bronchial tubes. We rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop it. That's enough. Loose your hold on God's man. You have no right to God's property. And I rejoice in you now, Lord, with thousands and thousands of prayer partners joining us live. Everybody just say it. Declare the decree by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Pastor Miles Rutherford is healed. Hallelujah. Now give God great, great, great praise for it. Blessed be the holy name of God forever. Now, they went up together. You and I in agreement together. They went to the temple. They went to a specific place. You hear me? A specific place. Now, folks have said, well, you know, that was the temple. 
and we have the great Sumrall Tabernacle, and that is where we gather to pray. Well, we can gather right here too. Whether so ever two or three are gathered in my name, I'm right there. Holy Spirit. Oh, I hear that beautiful song that Cameron and that Pastor Chris wrote out of that simple saying that I pray every night and every morning. Abba, I belong to you. Boy, it's a great place to start prayer. Why don't you just say it? Abba, I belong to you. I don't belong to this world. This world has no hold on me. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. Abba, I belong to you to you. You purchased me with the ransoming, redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood I plead now over every single person joining me in prayer, over their families, over their finances, over everything they set their hand to. I rebuke every plague, every sickness, every pain, every malady, every malfunction, every disease, take your hands off God's property. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Come on, join me. Worship him. I glorify you. I magnify you. I exalt you. I give you first place. I give you preeminence. You are above all things and in all things and through all things, and you are in us and I worship you, Jesus, for everything you've done. I worship you for everything you're doing. I worship you for what you have yet to bring into manifestation in our lives. But we have faith that lays hold on it even now. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you into this place. Come on, welcome him right now. It does no good to pray without presence. We must not pray without presence. But oh, when the Holy Spirit comes as he's coming to you right now, filling the atmosphere, the very molecular structure of everything around you right now, changing in the light and the radiance of the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our minds. Speak peace now. You are the peace speaker. Speak peace in our minds and in our hearts. Speak calmness. Speak victory. Speak assurance. Speak blessed Holy Spirit. We welcome you right now. Hallelujah. He's there right now. There to heal there to deliver. I even feel now that tumors are disappearing as we're in the presence of God right now. I speak clarity to your congested throat and nasal passages and bronchial tubes. I command even the various secretions in your body to be normal right now, to be free of every plague, free of every disease, free of every virus. COVID-19, you are a name, and I speak to that name in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jehovah, Joshua, Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you, stay your hand, stop your advancement, I rebuke you. I declare and decree for you to stop where you are and not to go one step further. We bind you together, for God has given us power to bind and to loose. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Now get this. They went up together at the hour of prayer. Tonight, that was 6 o'clock. We are in the hour of prayer right now. 
God's a God of timing. And when we come together like this, the very power of God, like lightning out of heaven, comes into your situation. Hallelujah. Just keep praying in the Holy Spirit as I'm speaking to you. At the hour of prayer, and a lame man was there. A lame man was there. So they were in agreement. They were at a certain place at a certain time, and a certain man with a certain need was there. And they spoke the word of God, and he was healed. Hear me now, because I, I don't know. I, I remember sharing this uh, at, at one point, at one point, but I, I don't remember. I'm doing so many of these. I really don't remember which one. So if a couple of you have heard it, well, you just come into agreement with me. I want you to understand today how powerful prayer is. We began these prayer meetings, and then when we got those directives from the government, we said, well, you know, that was all about being at the tabernacle. Well, the tabernacle of God is with men. It's in our hearts, and the church began in houses, so I'm not going to allow this to stop our prayers. In fact, I believe they're going to intensify. I believe that instead of hundreds joining, there are going to be thousands of us joining in agreement on Monday. That can happen if you will share this on all your social media outlets. Let everybody know we're praying. We're praying live. We're praying now. We're praying in agreement. We're praying in power. We're praying with expectation for the atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground of our miracles. Now, here it is. If my people, now just think about how many times you probably heard this verse in the last two weeks. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, well, this has sure been a humbling experience, hasn't it? And pray, there it is, and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. But here, here, watch this. That's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. But how many times do we pay attention to the preceding verse? 2 Chronicles 7, 13. God said, when I shut up the heaven and there is no rain. The lack of rain is the manifestation of idolatry. It's all through your Bible. America, are you hearing me? We live in a global community. If there's famine one place, it will eventually affect you. Listen to me. Right now, the heavens were shut up, and, and the worst wildfires that ever swept across Australia, the continent of Australia, swept across it. That was the beginning. Immediately on the heels of that, your Bible says, if I command the locusts to devour the land. Well, you see, you live, most of you, in America. You don't know what's going on right now in Africa. In Africa, the worst plague of locusts ever known is devouring everything in their path. Then, one more thing, or I send plagues among the people. The wildfires in Australia. Then came the devastation of locusts. Now comes the coronavirus. God said, when those things happen, if my people will do what we're doing tonight. Pray, 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 and not cease to praying. Your Bible says men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I'm going to start us off a little bit here. 
and then I'm just going to release you because I want you to pray. And if I continue to pray and you're agreeing with me, that's wonderful, but I want you to pray as well. I pray now for every person that is connected in any way to this great global ministry, which all issues forth out of this tremendous local church and its outreaches, World Harvest Church Columbus, World Harvest Church Elkhart. Come on, Elkhart, you've got to pray with us. Father, I thank you that every person connected to us by faith is blessed, healed, highly favored, delivered, protected, prospered in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. We are blessed for we walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor do we sit in the seat of the scornful, nor do we stand in the way of sinners, but our delight is in your law, God, and in your law we meditate day and night and night and day. And we are like trees planted by the rivers of water that in our season bring forth our fruit and our leaves do not wither. And whatsoever we set our hand to does not become infected. Whatsoever we set our hand to shall prosper. Lord, in agreement with these saints, with every man and woman of God agreeing with me right now, I declare and decree that our finances will increase. They will not dissipate. They will not fall away. That you are speaking to people, Lord, if you have to do what you did for your servant and bring ravens in the morning with flesh and meat and ravens in the evening with flesh and meat. Our faith is on the line. Lord God, make your people of a willing heart, a giving spirit in the day of your visitation. I know you're visiting us, Lord. I know you're keeping us. I know we are surrounded with favor as with a shield. I know that you are causing us to increase in wisdom and in favor and in stature with you and with men every single day. I bless you that because our ways please you, you cause even our enemies to be at peace with us. I speak Speak life to your finances. Those of you that are troubled about losing your job, I say this and this alone to you. Anything the enemy steals from you, you declare and decree. When the thief is found, he must restore sevenfold. You stand in your faith. Don't you dare let doubt and unbelief flow out of your mind. Open your mouth with a mighty decree and let God fill it. And then you'll see the words that you say, so shall it be. Don't wring your hands, lift your hands. Don't cuss, praise. Don't get down, be lifted up. Be not cast down, O our souls. Be not disquieted within us. Hope thou in God, my soul, and I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. I pray for City Harvest Network pastors and churches and members. I pray for President Donald Trump, for Vice President Mike Pence. I pray for Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Al Allergic Allergies and Infectious Diseases. I pray for everyone on the coronavirus task force. I pray for every doctor. I pray for every scientist. I pray for every clinician. I pray for every nurse. Oh, God, for protection for them. I pray for every person walk working in every hospital today. I pray for our first responders. I pray for every police officer, every fireman, every paramedic. I pray, Lord, for them that you will protect protect them, that you will surround them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for Governor Mike DeWine. I pray for wisdom 
for our director of health, Amy Acton. I pray for her right now. God, give them strength. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding. I pray for Mayor Andrew Ginther right now in the name of Jesus. I speak wisdom. I pray for every governor of every state in the United States of America for wisdom and cunning and understanding for Phronesis and Sunesis and Sophia. I release it to them and declare it upon them and every mayor of every city, of every hamlet, of every village, of every town. I pray, oh God, for your wisdom and that your people, your church will rise up. I pray for every medical researcher. Lord, I thank you. I declare and decree the fastest, the fastest immunization for this virus that we've ever seen. In Jesus' name, I pray for every family who's already lost a family member to this deadly, invisible enemy that must bow its knee to the name of Jesus. I pray for those of you who've lost a family member, those of you who have a family member that is sick right now. I pray, I pray for precious Sherry right now, Sherry Sanderson. I speak the living word of God to you. I command that fever to come off of you. Fever is a part of the curse listed in Deuteronomy 28, and I rebuke every part of the curse, every part of the curse. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray for every child at the Eckfeld Great Great Progeny Ministry. I pray protection over every person involved with those children. I speak life and the protective power of God. I pray for every nursing home and every, every uh, elderly care facility, every senior facility. I speak the living word of Jesus Christ over it. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for those who are in that category of illnesses and, and uh, immunodeficiency, those folks with heart conditions, those folks that are at great, great risk. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you right now. I rebuke all fear. I command the spirit of fear to come off of you. You do not fear. You do not fear. This too shall pass. I speak that to you. This too shall pass. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, we condemn, for this is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and our righteousness is of God. I speak peace to you. I speak peace to you now. I speak supply to you now. I speak faith to rise up on the inside of you right now. Lord, you are our shepherd. You are leading us. You are guiding us. We declare your decree, we shall not want. We shall not want. I rebuke all want, all lack. In the name of Jesus, I speak supernatural supply to you in every area of life and godliness. We shall not want. You make us lie down. As I was praying that this morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, you see, I'm making them lie down. I'm making them slow down. They've forgotten about me. Everything else has rushed in and taken my place. I will make them slow down. Oh, breathe. Know that God is near. I will not want. You make me to lie down. 
You make me rest. You make me be quiet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you have children at home, you don't think a thing about the noise. But just as soon as it gets quiet, you know they're up to something. When God seems quiet, he's up to something. When he quiets us down, he's got something to say, something to do. You make us to lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside still waters. You restore our souls. I speak that to you now. Restoration in your mind. Restoration in your emotions. You restore my soul. You lead me. That's enough. You lead me. What should I do? Oh, the phone calls. Oh, the texts that I've gotten received. One after the other. Pastor, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Here's a good way to start. Instead of saying, what shall I do about this? Do what we're doing right now. Say, God, what will you do about this? He's your father. He's leading you in paths of righteousness for his own namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of COVID-19, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you, God, are with us right now. In every situation, you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. That rod was used for two things. It's got a hook on the end of it to draw you back to the shepherd, to get you back in his presence. And the other end of it was used to stave off enemies. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. A thousand fall at my left hand, Lord, and 10,000 at my right, but it shall not come nigh me. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory. You are the lifter of my head as the ancient, as the ancient tool, lulav, waved by the ancient Israelites above them and beneath them, to the left, to the right, in front of them and behind them. So you surround us, O Lord. Surround us now with your holy presence. Surround us, O God. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil so that that yoke-destroying burden, removing anointing, throws off the yoke. Your weight is over. Your weight is lifted. You anoint our heads with oil. I anoint you now in the Holy Spirit. I cover you with oil. The favor of God, the protective covering of God over you, over your children. If they're there, lay your hands on them right now. If your husband is there, lay your hands on them. Your spouse, lay your hands on them. Father, we release the anointing of the Holy Spirit for whatever may be needed right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Our cups run over. Say it, my cup's running over, my cup's running over. Declare that decree. My cup is running over, my cup is running over. I have enough, I have more than enough. My God sustains me, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I shall not want your cup's running over. Surely goodness, mercy are following you all the days of your life and you dwell 
in the house of the Lord forever, dwelling in that secret place, Lord, of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, and saying of you, Lord, you are a refuge, you are a fortress, you are our God, and you will we trust. Surely you have delivered us from the snare of this thing, the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence, making so much noise, this virus. You have delivered us from the pestilence and from the wasting disease. We are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release the anointing to you now. I release the anointing to you now. Let your eyes be healed. Let your mind be at peace. Let that heart valve be healed. Hallelujah. Let your back pain be gone. We pray for Pastor Tim Houston right now, Lord. In a mighty agreement, we pray. We pray that you break the power of that sickness and disease, that attack of the adversary. We speak life to his muscular system. We speak fullness of operation to his lungs. We command those places in his back to be healed for the glory of God and precious Francis Jolly's heart to be healed. We speak healing to ears right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sure appreciate you agreeing with me. I thank God for you. I bless you in the mighty and glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve. Don't you be anxious for anything. Let's just pray that together, Lord. We are anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, we have made our request known unto you. Now may the very peace of our God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May that mind which dwelt in Christ Jesus dwell in us likewise. Father, we agree that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through you. Yes, give us masks. Yes, give us gowns. Yes, give us gloves. Yes, but oh God, more than anything, breathe your breath upon us and we shall be healed. Breathe on us, oh God, the breath, the wind of the Holy Spirit. May it come to you now for the glory of God. And may more than any other time in your life, may you sense the power and the presence of God right there where you are, as I sense it here where I am. Well, I've got some wonderful things coming up for you. God's been speaking to me about more ways that I can minister to you. If you're not on all our social websites, if you're not familiar with rodparsley.tv, if you're not familiar with rodparsley.com, Harvest Music Live, they've got websites. Ashton Blair Parsley, she's got all of her websites. We're ministering to you. Harvest Youth has its websites. We're, we're ministering to you. We pray for all those of our students. Valor Christian College, God bless your hearts. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. I know you're enjoying your little extended spring break, but soon it'll be time to hit those books again, so get ready. We miss you so terribly. Can I tell you that? I miss you. I miss every one of you. I miss walking in that great Summerall Tabernacle. But this too shall pass. I believe God with you. Send your prayer requests. You can send them to rodparsley.com. There's a place there you can send them. You can 
comment them on any of our social media sites, and we're praying for you. We've got some time. Praise God. I don't know how many hours I've prayed today, and I don't care because the presence of God is so wonderful.